Hola, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo están? Amigas y amigos de Cinemex, mi nombre es Gonzalo Lira y nos encontramos aquí porque vamos a platicar de la magia del cine con el director Jonathan Hensley, quien está estrenando la película Riesgo Bajo Cero. Pero además se trata de una leyenda viva, así que vamos a aprovechar para platicar de otras cosas dentro de su filmografía como Armageddon, Duro de Matar y muchas otras más. ¿Me acompañan? Tell me something, uh, because I, I, uh, watching your, um, your, your work, I, I realized that there are two things that I uh, noticed. Uh, the first is that here, uh, that since Armageddon, you, you've been like uh, hinting into uh, themes that have to do with the um, uh, environment uh, in a certain way. And also that this, uh, your protagonists are characters that are like guys that have nothing to do with the situation. They, they, they are like in the most, uh, in the uh, weirdest situation that they could be put in, but uh, they decide to go and, and, and take uh, the, the, the job. So why, why do you think that you have these two obsessions in a certain way? I don't know. It's, it's, it's very interesting what you point out because it always takes another another person to point out I, I i'm too close to my own career i don't know I, when i sit in my office and stare at the wall and i'm trying to figure out a new screenplay or sort of what i want to do next i don't think of of, of of that in terms of a plan you know i but i guess i do gravitate toward i, I think i gonzalo i guess the only way to answer that is i think that the most meaningful times in my own life The, the times I remember the most, um, the high the high points and I guess some of the low points is when I'm faced with something with a situation where I I'm completely out of my depth. I don't where I don't know what's going to happen in front of me. I'm doing something utterly unrehearsed, unknown. It's unknown territory. So I think that that's probably why I. Um, I think that's probably why I do it. I mean, the the fish out of water character concept is as old as it gets. That 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 goes all the way back to Greek drama, to take a character who's doing something he's never done before, um, because you can watch the character adapt to his new environment through the character's eyes. I mean, probably the probably the most extreme example of this that I did was Nicolas Cage in The Rock. Where, where he he's a lab rat. He's a he's a just this researcher who's then required to go in and do this, put a gun on, and he's he's in the FBI, but he's not a field agent. So, um, or or all of the astronauts on a, 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 who are not astronauts, uh, you know, they're oil drillers in Armageddon. You know, so I probably do it because it's the easiest way to get it at a, a, a highly dramatic situation. Talking, talking about sources, uh, it also reminded me, and I, and I noticed that other people have, have pointed that out. Uh, the Wages of Fear and, and Sorcerer, the, the, the American remake for, from... Um... Yeah. So tell me, tell me something. Uh, was it, was it uh, like, uh, like a conscious thing that yeah. you want to, to, to remember those two movies? Well, the original and, and its remake? Yeah, I, I saw Source, uh, excuse me, I saw Wages of Fear when I was about 10. And and um, this was in the '60s, and so it was it was uh, they were replaying the film on television. And I remember one night um, it was with subtitles, and 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 we just started watching it. And it was Eve Montan, and we I, I was drawn in, and I I was I've been obsessed with that movie my entire career. It, there's just something I love the small cast. And I love the ep so the smallness of the cast, just four people, with the epic backgrounds, the combination of the character work and the intensity of the suspense with the action. And so I, it was something that was always on my mind, but I couldn't figure out a way to do it. And I was a fan of that reality show, Ice Road Truckers. And one, it just, it just clicked, it just dawned on me, I said, well, This is a perfect way to do wages of fear. These mismatched truck drivers down on their luck who are taking cargo across extremely dangerous 
place, but it doesn't look like the Andes Mountains and it doesn't look like the jungle, you know, William Friedkin's remake. So it's totally different in its environment and it's not a straight remake. It's kind of inspired by. So that's, 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 yeah, it was very conscious on my part, yes. My brother is in that mine. This is personal. Now I'm angry. And, and what makes you, because you already mentioned The Rock and, and Armageddon and there's uh, Die Hard with a Vengeance, The Saint, and they all have like this uh, big movie stars. They, they're, they all being like big action flicks. What makes you decide when you want to direct your own material? Because uh, you don't, you don't dare to do that very often. So what makes you say like, okay, I, I, I want to handle, I want to take the handle on this one. Uh, for me, I had done the, the, the job in Hollywood where you, you work as a writer and, and I had some hits. So I was able to do it as a writer and an executive producer. I worked a lot with Jerry Bruckheimer and, and it is, it's, a, it's a wonderful job and it pays really well. But it's, but, but, but it's, it's a little bit like being a professional athlete, seriously. It's very, very hard to keep up the intensity. And you're always working on somebody else's vision, either the director's vision or the, or the producer's vision or the studio head or the actor. You're, you're, you're serving someone else's vision. And, and you, you, a lot of guys they, they, and gals, they just keep doing it. And they do it because they're, they're getting out of it what they wanted to get out of it from the beginning. For me, it stopped being that interesting. And, and, and I just said to myself, look, I'm gonna direct these pictures um, and I'm gonna wait for the right opportunities. And the other thing is, I haven't. I, I sort of. I took almost eight or nine years off because I developed this company in Las Vegas. So, this this company here, this other business pursuit. See, I was on Wall Street before I came into the film industry. So I had this other career to begin with. So, I I never wanted to make Hollywood the dominant part of my life. I never wanted to allow. I I, I saw a lot of my colleagues that got steamrolled by the Hollywood machine because they let Hollywood run their life. And that's not healthy. So, so I, I wanted to avoid that. We're coming. Just hang on.